you've probably heard in pickleball that you don't need a big backswing. That's not entirely true. It depends on what you're doing. If you're up on the kitchen line hitting soft dinks, you probably don't need a big backswing. If you're back on the baseline hitting return of serves or third shot drives, you probably do need a big backswing. Today I'm going to talk about what that backswing should look like. Consistency is key in pickleball. If I want all of my shots going across that net to be consistent, then everything I do on this side of the net needs to be consistent as well. That includes the backswing. There are two major types of backswings. The first one that I will show you is the one you should not do. So I'm in my ready position, this ball is coming at me and I pendulum my paddle back and then I swing forward. The problem with this motion is that depending on how fast that ball is coming, people will generally stop their backswing at different locations. That's not very consistent. It's going to lead to inconsistencies going across that net. Option number two then, and this is the one I think you should do, is that I treat my backswing completely different than my forward swing. The backswing is its own entity and it should look like this. I'm in my ready position, that ball's coming at me. I take my paddle and I bring it back parallel to the floor, always to this common starting location, regardless of how fast that ball is coming. Here's another way to envision that, and here's a way you can practice. Get in that starting position. As I pull my paddle back to prepare to get this backswing going, my paddle should stay above the level of that net. If it does, then that is a more consistent backswing I will end up in the same starting location more often for that forward swing. All right, so why is this better? The big reason is it's more consistent. So if I have a more consistent starting location, my forward swing feels more familiar, more consistent. I talk about in terms of me getting to this gym every morning, say I wanna get here at 6 a.m. every day, always starting from my house, that route is pretty familiar, it's pretty predictable for me to get here right at six. Now imagine I started from different locations every morning. For me to get here at six would be a little bit more difficult. The route is less familiar and it's less predictable. If I could always start my forward swing from a common location, my forward swing gets to be much more predictable and way more consistent. Another thing, just because I have my paddle this far back doesn't mean I have to swing hard at this ball. I can swing nice and smooth and slowly or I can speed that up and swing quicker. I can do whichever one of those I choose to do. Just because my paddle is this far back doesn't mean I have to hit that ball hard. Another advantage to this technique is as this ball's coming, I'm trying to get my paddle prepped by the time that ball bounces. If I can do that, then I'm in good shape. If this ball happens to get to me quicker than I thought it was gonna to get to me, I can just swing a little bit early because I'm already prepared. If this ball gets to my non-paddle hand a little bit later than I thought, I just hang out here, wait for the ball to get closer, and then swing. So I'm treating my backswing as its own entity, its own thing, completely separate from that forward swing. So let's think about it, another big advantage of doing this. I think of my forehand as in two parts. First part is the backswing, the prep, the preparation, and the second part is that forward swing. If I can think about those in two parts and treat those two parts differently, it's better for me. It makes my timing easier. Here's why. Remember my ready position, ball's coming, I get prepped. Now I can forget all of my preparation. All I have to do is focus on that ball coming and getting my timing right so I get my paddle where it needs to be when it needs to be there. From here to here, a relatively short path, much easier to time versus if I think of my forehand swing as one motion, I've got to come from this ready position all the way back and all the way forward to get my paddle where it needs to be when it needs to be there. A much longer distance to travel, much harder to time. If I can break that down into two parts, timing is much easier. Pull this paddle back, I wait for the ball to get here. Now my timing only has to be from here to here. Much, much easier to time and hit that shot well going back across the net. So consistency is everything in pickleball. The more consistent I am, the better I can hit those balls. I wanna make life easier on myself. I wanna make timing of my shots easier. If I can think of this in two parts, get my paddle prepared, hang out here for a second, much shorter distance to go to hit that ball, 
My timing is going to be better. Those shots going across the net are going to be better. Let's go look at some examples. Left hand's out by the ball. That left hand's out by the ball. It tells me where that ball is going to be. If it's short, if it's steep, if I need to move, I need to move because my left hand is telling me that. The closer I can get my left hand to that ball, the better I know where it is. Get my left hand out of the way. I simply pull my left shoulder back, starts my shoulder rotation, brings my right shoulder forward. I have more body mass into this shot. I can hit that ball harder if I want to or not. Totally up to me.